Okay, welcome to Further Mechanics Checkpoint 1. This is the first part of Momentum. Uh, here's our first question. This is a nice straightforward graph plotting question. Just be careful not to make any silly mistakes. So we've got time on the x-axis and we've got to uh, get to a maximum value of 8. So sensible way to do that. Nice and easy. Just go up in ones. We've got uh, force on the y-axis and our maximum value is 0 0.2 we just go up uh, to 0 0.2 like that label the y-axis so there's no marks for that in the mark scheme there are however three marks for plotting all the points correctly so just be careful they've given you nice straightforward numbers not giving you anything tricky to plot um, one thing that's important to note on this is that what they say here is uh, plot a graph plot a graph involves plotting the points but also drawing the line I think I would go on this for a best fit straight line uh, somewhere around there. Count the points, see if you've got equal numbers either sides. Okay, and there you go. That's a nice easy start to the questions for you. State what is given by the area under the graph. Well, if we just go back, we can see this is a graph of force against time. So the area under the graph will be the integral um, of force with respect to time and the that is force times time, which is impulse, or impulse could be called change of, sorry about the typo there, momentum. So the rubber band is wound up and released to power a locomotive. Use your graph to show the speed of the locomotive. Eight seconds after the twisted rubber band is released, it's 1.6 meters per second. Ignore any other effects. So all we need to do is take our indication from this little bit here, which they're giving you as a clue of how to do this question. We're looking for a change of momentum. So if we go back to here, we can see the time is 8 seconds and the force is 0 0.2 newtons. It's a triangle. Um, so we've got delta mv equals um, the change of momentum is uh, ft, which is 0 0.2 times, I should really probably, if we're in A-level, or at the integral of fdt, but it's the area under the graph. So that's 0 0.8, no it's not, 0 0.2 times 8, but because it's um, a triangle it's only half of that, so that's 0 0.8 newton seconds. So delta mv equals 0 0.8, but one thing we need to notice from above is that the mass is 0 0.5, the mass isn't changing, so this is 0 0.5 delta v because remember this is the whole of delta mv here, is 0 0.8, so delta v is 0 0.8 over 0 0.5, which is 1.6 metres per second. It started at rest, so delta v and the final v is the same thing. Okay, then it goes along, so it's moving along already, remember here at 1.6 metres per second, let's make ourselves a little note here, so remember that, 1.6 metres per second, and um, calculate the speed of the coupled locomotive and truck after its collision. So our 0 0.5 kilogram um, locomotive collides with a 1.5 kilograms truck. This is a question about the conservation of momentum. So the momentum before is 0 0.5 times 1.6, which is 0 0.8 newton seconds. So therefore the momentum after must be 0 0.8 seconds. So after, we know it's got to be 0 0.8, and this is the new mass, which is the 1.5 plus the 0 0.5 that was already there from the um, locomotive, times V, so 0 0.8 equals 2V, V equals 0 0.4 metres per second. Calculate the combined kinetic energy of the locomotive and truck immediately after the collision, well, Here's our kinetic energy equation, half mv squared. So this is a half times the total mass, which is 2, times the velocity, which is 0 0.4 squared. Uh, obviously, the half times the, not, the times the 2 cancels out there. So we just end up with one, 0.16 joules. Show with the aid of calculation, okay, so don't try and do without that, whether or not the collision is elastic. Uh, it's probably worth noticing here that if two things stick together, the collision will never be um, elastic. So 
um, but we do need to prove it. So we just need to calculate the momentum before, uh, sorry, the kinetic energy before, beg your pardon. So that's a half mv squared again. So this is a half times the mass originally was 0 0.5 times the velocity of 1.6 squared. So uh, that comes to 0 0.64 joules. Okay, therefore, inelastic. Okay. 0.16 is not equal to 0.64. Okay, remember in, an, in, an, in an elastic, have to be careful how you say that, in an elastic collision, the total kinetic energy stays the same as well as the momentum. The momentum always stays the same. Okay, speaking of which, the principle of conservation of linear momentum, don't be confused by this uh, word linear here. Okay, there is a kind of momentum called angular momentum, which we don't do, so you only have to worry about linear momentum. So if you see the word momentum, assume it means linear momentum. Um, two marks here, a classic sort of thing where everybody gets one mark, but not everyone gets two. So the total momentum after a collision is the same as the total momentum before the collision. That's your one mark. Your second mark is for talking about either a closed system or to say no external force acts. So as long as you're considering every object within a system. Obviously, if you drop something, for example, its momentum changes. It's the total momentum of it and the Earth, which stays the same. Okay, so here's a classic uh, old-school experiment. We've got a bullet here being fired into a wooden block. It hits the block, and the wooden block swings upwards. This is a way that was traditionally used to work out the speed of a bullet. Um, so the bullet's got a mass of 0 0.1, 0 0.01 kilograms, and it's going at 200 meters per second, and it hits the 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 wood, which is 0 0.39. That looks like a very strange number to use, but you'll see in a minute why that's actually being helpful. So the momentum of the bullet before it strikes a block, okay, we're just doing P equals mv, so 0 0.01 times 200 um, is 2 newton seconds. The speed with which the block moves um, from rest after it, the bullet strikes it, well, this again is conservation momentum, so we know it's going to have a momentum uh, p of 2 newton seconds, and its mass is 0 0.39 plus another 0 0.01, because remember the bullet is now embedded inside the block. Um, times the velocity, so 2 equals 0 0.4 v v equals 2 over 0 0.4 is 5 meters per second. Okay, during the collision, the block and the bullet, um, sorry, during the collision, the bullet and the, and the block's kinetic energy is, con is converted into thermal energy. Show the kinetic energy of the bullet before it strikes the block is 200 joules. Well, again, that's a nice, easy, straightforward question, a half mv squared. So that was a half times 0 0.01 times 200 squared, okay, that comes to 200 joules. Make sure you've written the working out because it's a show that, so you do need to convince the examiner you've actually worked it out. Show the kinetic energy of the combined block and bullet immediately after the bullet's lodged is 5 joules. Well, we've just worked out the speed, haven't we? So we've got a half mv squared is a half times um, the total mass, which was 0 0.4, times the new velocity, which is 5 squared. And if you work that out, um, that actually comes to 5 joules. So we've lost 195 joules of the kinetic energy. That's gone into heat in the block up. That's why um, the block will get warmer. So the bullet lodges at the center of mass um, g of the block, calculate the vertical height through which the block rises. This is how this calculation is really done, because you can't measure that speed of the bullet normally. You're trying to work out the speed of the bullet, because the kinetic energy, and that's 5 joules of kinetic energy beforehand, turns into um, potential energy. So the 5 joules of kinetic energy turns into potential energy. Uh, potential energy, as we know, is mg delta h, so that's the total mass of the two things is 0 0.4 times 9.8 times the height it goes up, so h equals 5 over 0 0.4 times 9.8, that calculates to 1.3 meters. 
Okay, this is a slightly strange question. This is, uh, but if you've used the light gates, which I'm sure you will have, okay, the things you need to measure here are the width of this card. That's in this direction, so be careful. You're talking about the width of the card, and then the computer will work out for you with our apparatus how long, uh, how fast it's going. But the way it's doing that is it's measuring how long it breaks the beam for, and then the two things move off together and go through the second light gate. And this, the card is still attached to this one, but the two things are combined together, so it goes through the second light gate. So the measurements we need to make are the width of the card and the time the G1 light beam is broken for. And then after the collision, we need to find the time that the G2 light beam is broken. Okay, explain how you would verify momentum was conserved, indicating what other measurements would be required. Um, well, we'd just work out the momentum before and momentum afterwards and show they were the same. Um, but the bit, obviously, you've got to do to also do that is to know the masses of the trolleys so you can actually calculate the momentum. Um, what would you do to minimise friction? You may have to come across this, although um, I must admit it's not something we always mention. If you're doing these sort of experiments not on an air track but on a runway with tro with trolleys, the traditional method is to just tilt the runway slightly. So you tilt the ramp a little bit to what they call compensate for friction, just so that the trolleys will run down at a constant speed. If you don't do anything to them, then you know that the component of the weight acting down the slope is equal to the friction going up the slope, and therefore you can get experiments as if the situation was frictionless. Okay, here's quite a tricky question, and it also requires a little bit of uh, memory about um, some other topics on nuclear decay. So we've got a 6.1 mega electron volt alpha particle being emitted, um, and it's got a mass, as we know, the mass of an alpha particle is 4U, and we've got to calculate the speed. So the units are tricky for a start, so mega electron volts are no use to us. So we first need to work out that the energy of uh, 6.1 mega electron volts is 6.1 times 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. That's 1 electron volts, but we're doing mega electron volts, so times 10 to the 6. Uh, so that comes to 9.8 times 10 to the minus 13 uh, joules. Sorry, I've forgotten to mention something here. There's a typo here. This is not 10 to the minus 7. This should be 10 to the plus 7. If alpha particles come out of out at uh, 10 to the minus 7, the world would be a much safer place. So um, this is the energy, and then we just do a half mv squared. So a half mv squared is 9.8 times 10 to the minus 13. And then we've got to work out the mass, and this is in U, so another unit problem here. So the mass is 4 lots of 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Okay, so that gives us V is the square root of, if we take the 2 up the top, 2 times 9.8 times 10 to the minus 13 divided by 4 times 1.66 times 10 to the minus 27. If you stick that in your calculator you will get an answer of 1.7 times 10 to the 7 metres per second, definitely not minus 7. OK, so that's the alpha particle come was in out forwards. Um, but what happens is that the, the daughter nuclei that's left behind gets uh, pushed backwards by that, OK, because of the conservation momentum. So the total momentum of the system, this is like firing a cannon, is zero. right? But afterwards, we've got the alpha particle with a mass of 4u, uh, and it's going this way at 1.7 times 10 to the 7 metres per second. And then we've got the daughter nucleus left behind. If you look at the equation, um, this is a tellurium 208 nucleus, so it's got a mass of 208 atomic mass units, and it's going this way at some speed we don't know, V. Right, but what we do know is the total is zero, so if we're taking this one as positive, 4U uh, times 1.7 times 10 to the 7, uh, take away, this one's negative, 208U times V, that must equal zero. Okay, so the U's will cancel out, and that will leave us with V equals uh, 4 times 1.7 times 10 to the 7, divided by 208. 
which comes to 3.3 .3 times 10 to the 5 meters per second. So you can see that the recoil velocity is very high in these circumstances. Okay, just a quick multiple choice one to finish us off. Hopefully this is fairly straightforward. Um, so here's our ball with a mass m going to the right with the speed of v. So its momentum beforehand is mv. It's going to hit the ball and bounce back. Um, the key thing to understand here is the vector nature of the velocity. So afterwards it's doing this. So its momentum is minus mv. Okay, so zero might be a um, attempting answer but remember that the whole point about this is this is not a closed system the momentum of the ball has changed it was going right before it's going left afterwards that's a change so that tells us it's one of these two answers okay because it's a change of 2mv is it a change to the right or to the left well it was going right before and now it's going left so it's 2mv to the left so b is the correct answer